In this video, we discuss some of the benefits and trade-offs that might result from concurrent processing. So this video assumes you already have a solid understanding of what we mean by thinking concurrently. If you've not seen it yet, we suggest you watch our video on tackling concurrent problems first. So concurrent processing offers many benefits. Let's have a look at some of them now. Firstly, we have what's called reactive programming. This is the concept that a user should be able to interact with applications while other tasks are running in the background. Think about working on a presentation while at the same time downloading a file and maybe listening to some music on a streaming site. Virtually all operating systems are built like this to support many concurrent processes. We have the availability of services. Now this is the idea that we shouldn't have a long running task delaying a short running one. Web browsers use this concept all the time. The entry page to a new website could be served to the browser in parts with text and images loading before say some video content has arrived. Parallelism. So a complex program could make better use of multiple resources in a multi-core and or multi-processor system. Remember from the previous video that parallel processing is simply a specialised form of concurrency, which actually means that different tasks, which are not dependent on each other, are actually able to be physically run or executed at the exact same time. And controllability. So this is the concept that a task which might require certain preconditions to proceed could be suspended and then wait until those preconditions are met before resuming execution transparently to the user. All of the benefits just discussed essentially lead to two of the biggest reasons for concurrent processing. Firstly, the number of tasks completed in a given time is effectively increased and the time that would be wasted by a processor waiting, for example, on the user or another process is reduced. There are, of course, some disadvantages or trade-offs to concurrent processing, which should also be considered. The first is safety. So concurrent tasks should not be allowed to corrupt the consistent state of a program. And this can become quite difficult when keeping track of many tasks and processes operating concurrently. We also have the concept of liveness. So here we're saying tasks should not suspend and then indefinitely wait for each other. Now again, this can occur more easily with many concurrent processes or operations occurring at once. If this happens, it's a situation known as deadlock. And it's something which databases, especially large relational databases with many users, have to deal with often. And also we should consider resource consumption. We discussed the advantage of multi-threading in the previous video, and this is possible due to concurrency. However, threads can be expensive. There are overheads to consider when it comes to scheduling of multiple threads context switching between them and synchronization of events. Concurrent programs, if designed poorly, can actually run slower than their sequential counterparts, even if we have multiple CPU cores available. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What are some of the main benefits and trade-offs of concurrent processing? To help get your head around everything to do with computational thinking, we have a freely available downloadable cheat sheet. It's got two sides to it. There's a basic poster that reminds you at a top level what the five different strands are. And on the back, there's a much more detailed explanation. This resource is completely free from student.craigandave.org. Just scroll down and select the section that says A level revision. You will then see a section called OCR, AS and A-Level, and there's a number of cheat sheets in there, including two versions of the computational one. Just click download to get the zip file. 